All right, YouTubers, we've got a very special treat today. Now, I always generally pan up from the concrete to show you what we've been working on, but uh, so today is very special. You ready? Check this out. This is a Schwinn Stingray. Uh, Orange County Chopper Schwinn Stingray version that was made in the early 2000s. Now this also, as you can see, has a motor on it. This is a 49cc four-stroke and we'll get into the details of that uh, conversion which this video is going to be titled Nothing Fits. But let's get let's go through the features of the bike. Back in the early to mid 2000s there was a reality television show, show called Orange County Choppers. I'm sure you guys have all watched it on Discovery Channel the father and the son duking it out for making the best choppers and, and whatever and whatnot. But back then, Schwinn licensed, uh, or Orange County Choppers licensed Schwinn to use their logo and insignia to come out with this kid's chopper bicycle, which is so cool. Now, for you older folks, you'll know that back in the 70s, there was also a Schwinn Stingray. That one looked very 70s. It had the, the banana handlebars, the big banana seat, and the sissy bar in the back. And for those lucky kids who got the five-speed version, there was a gear shift stick in the middle of the frame tube. Now, it's, it was the five, it was a five-speed, and instead of having the lever shift or the twist shift like we have today, you actually had a, a one through five gear lever in the middle. And how cool was that if you were a kid back in the mid 70s? So let's go through the features of the bike as the way it was, and then we'll go through the conversion process step by step. First off. You've got two different size tires. The front is a 24 inch by 1.75 standard bike rim, but it's got the, the straight spokes like a, like a Ferris wheel with the, long, the big hub and a nice touch right here. The Dice valve stem, and that came like that from the factory. It says Stingray on the side. You have nice chrome handlebars. Very, very cool. And as far as some, some models, older ones, had a footrest right here, a spring footrest that came down, and a fender. But the, it's not missing here, it's just this model didn't have it. You have a nice sweep on the fork. The back tire is a 20 inch rim of 20 by 4.25. Now, they didn't have fat bike, fat tire bikes back then, but this was a 20 by 4.25. And it was a single, this one was a single speed cassette and the chain and the uh, uh, front sprocket were over on this side. Now, as far as where to pick up a bike like these, these obviously are not made anymore. They came in red, black, I think an orange, um, maybe a green, I'm not sure. But ex examples of these in poor shape, you can get between 40 to 60 bucks. Pristine examples are going to be 250 to 300. And this one here, the way I got it was about 160. Great deal, clean, tires a little dry rotted, but it is what it is, this is what we got. So you, I know you guys know I normally do electric conversions, but uh, grandma bought this four cycle engine, four stroke engine for my son for his sixth grade graduation. And so now I had to figure out how to, how to put it together. And if you're not handy or you're not good with welding or you don't know anybody that can weld, um, you might want to pass because there is no kit that I can think of that's still available anymore that's specifically designed to fit a four-stroke 49cc in here. Now you can do all, all kinds of wacky stuff to make it work, which is what I had to do here. It's not to say you couldn't put a bigger engine in, but it seems to me that most people who do these do the two-stroke because it's narrower and it's smaller. Now we, ch we like the four-stroke because um, we like the four stroke because it's quieter, it's not stinky, and it revs to a lower RPM. And just for putts around town, it's great. I don't know how legal it is, but whatever. We'll get to that later. Okay, here we go. So as you can see, this is just like a shrunken down little Shriners motorcycle. So um, I don't even know where to begin because everything I had to do all had to be custom nothing fit so for starters you got to mount the motor the kit you can find these kits on amazon for about 180 bucks 
and it comes with the motor mount, the motor, uh, extended pedal arms, um, uh, a chain guard, and um, the rear sprocket, the sprocket adapter assembly, gas tank, throttle, new handles, um, everything like that. So um, once we realized that there was nothing that we were going to be able to do with a four-stroke engine to make this so you could still pedal the bike, well, we had to uh, trash the idea of it being a bicycle anymore. Other, also, the existing bike had a giant caliper brake here, which I removed. Here's the mounting arm. I, I needed an angle grinder, ground that off and painted it. And then I had to run a new new brake line, but let's we'll get to that in a second. So as far as mounting this, okay, everything is so tight that th there wasn't a single thing that that had to that couldn't uh, that could work by itself. Even the choke lever wouldn't fit. It's so tight. This bracket, the rear bracket fit, and the front bracket right here, I had to use a piece of 3 16 3/16 steel and grind away a little bit and mount it that way, and it's strong it's good it's not going anywhere I had to cut into the the chain or the uh, pedal guard here and I actually took the arms off and put them both at the same side and welded a bracket so now these are the foot pegs it's actually pretty cool and it works great so they don't pedal anymore so that's that's what those are for the exhaust didn't fit I had to cut right here bend it open tack it in place, take it off, and then fill it in, and then paint over it in order because, look, it didn't fit there either. Gas tank didn't fit because why? Because of this right here. I had to weld little tabs right here on both sides to mount the gas tank. The brake. Here's the best part about it. This is about the only thing that works. We'll get to that, okay? I, I was able to spin off the freewheel cassette and I bought a br disc brake adapter from Amazon and was able to spin this disc brake adapter on and then mount a disc brake and a cat and make I, I welded two tabs here and put a disc brake here. Problem though, folks, when you have a freewheel cassette and you're pedaling this way, the action of pedaling tightens the freewheel on, which is by design, it's good. But this spins on the same way. And if you hold it while your bike's going 25 miles an hour and you squeeze this, what's it gonna do? It's going to try to unscrew itself. And then what, what happens is it'll unscrew itself and then it'll jam inside the brake here and then you, and you stop and you can't move. So what I had to do is I used a ton of thread lock, had to drill a hole through this adapter and put a screw through that hole just into the hub to hold it there. Otherwise, you're going to be in big, big trouble. You've got to figure out a way to keep that stay put. Now, if, if I find out that that doesn't work, I'll have to drill a hole, drill these threads out, and go around to the other side and just put a bolt to hold it there. Five of these will hold the disc onto the adapter. One will keep it from spinning. Okay? See that? All right. Now for the sprocket for the motor. The sprocket motor adapter didn't fit. Because why? because of this big giant hub inside of here that you know you see the sprocket adapters in the kit just look it up on Amazon you'll see it it's got the rubber plate that screws on and you'll see on Project Farm they talk about how to mount it the screws go here you have a rubber and a bracket and you screws in like that guess what doesn't work and you know what even if it did it still wouldn't work why because you move this bracket over it's going to rub up against the fender so guess what I had to do? I had to weld it, okay? So I got it level with the trick that Project Farm said to use tie wraps. Tack it once, spin it, and see if it's straight. If it's straight, tack it in the other spot. Spin it, and you just keep doing it, and you, pretty soon you're gonna get it perfect. And right now, it's perfect. And it's, tacked, it's, it's, not, it's not welded so much that it's permanent that I'll never be able to get it off, but it's welded enough that it's not gonna go anywhere. So there's that. The 415 heavy chain that they put in the kit, didn't use it. Why? Because it was too thick, it was rubbing. So I used the existing chain that was on here, which is 410 chain, which worked perfectly in place of that. Plus it looks nicer. All right, the chain tensioner that they gave with you, 
that they came with the kit didn't work. Why? Because it didn't have a spring and it mounted right here. It got in the way here. I couldn't put it here. I couldn't put it here. I couldn't put it here. Anything like that. Didn't work. The chain guard they gave you didn't work. Couldn't mount it anywhere. And here's the part that sucked the most. Look at the sprocket. Look what I had to do. Now, this, since this is a 410 sprocket setup, this isn't the uh, a two stroke with the, uh, the T8F chain kit. I had to dremel out the sprocket so that it went over the shaft nipple here and I had to align it in place. And once I aligned it in place, I tack welded it. Okay. So I didn't cut this off right here. I suppose I could, but that's how that worked. And you can't find the 410 sprocket example or something with a shorter shaft so that this works in this situation. So again, everything was custom. The throttle, the throttle cable come up, bracket came off over here and over. It didn't fit, so I had to flip it around, okay? And you can see the tolerances of how close my, how close the exhaust is, and this will rub. So we're probably gonna get that poo-poo pipe extension and come over around and back, but then I'd have to come down here. Um, so this is, I had to buy a chain tensioner. Um, so that didn't fit either. So pretty much everything that I did was all custom. I, ha I, I didn't want to leave it as a caliper brake with uh, a motorized vehicle or motorized engine. It's, it's, I, I just don't trust them like that. So that being said, um, the throttle, Works fine. And the other thing too, all right, very important. We're day number three and we've already burned out a clutch. Amazing. Why? Because these kits, people need to listen very carefully. These kits are designed for bicycles that you still pedal. To have 49 cc's try to get you from a dead stop, you're going to go through clutches. Now I've got a high performance racing clutch with much hotter or much harder pads coming but we put the only thing we can get quickly was a generic one. There's a four stroke heavy duty. It's, it's completely circular. It's about 25 bucks on eBay. That's the one you're gonna want. There's good reviews on it. it looks like that solves the problem. Um, so basically, uh, as a recap, it can no longer be a bicycle if you want the four stroke. You're gonna have to make these into pedals, make these into footrests, you're going to have to change the handles. You're going to have to change the brake. You're going to have to add an a aftermarket tensioner. You're going to have to cut off your choke. You're going to have to make your own tabs for your gas tank. You're going to have to put weld your own tabs for your disc brake. You're going to have to weld the sprocket on. Um, you're going to have to weld the sprocket onto the shaft after you grind it out. Um, pretty much everything, you, everything was custom. But you know what? We got it working. And as soon as... Uh, we get that high performance clutch in, we'll give it a try. Um, but in the meantime,
Oh yeah, we got a kill switch too. So there you go, folks. That's a quick review. Um, we don't have a top speed yet, which I'm sure that's what everybody really wanted. I'll post it in the chat once I get a video of that and his phone holder comes in. Other than that, take care. Email if you got any questions. Bye.